At the same time, as our advance in the Kurs region, the Russian army continues its offensive in Ukraine. The most capable units of the Russian army are involved in expanding the zone of occupation of our territory in the Donetsk region. This is a clear choice by Moscow. Putin wants more Ukraine to occupy than he wants security for Russia. He doesn't care about Russian land and people. He just wants to grab as much of our land and as many of our cities as possible. We do want to end this war. We want peace. We want to save our people, first of all, our country. And it is Putin who doesn't want peace. And that is why we need strength. We need to force Russia to seek peace. We need to make Russia cities and even Russian soldiers think about what they need, peace or Putin. And it is realistic to push them to choose peace. You all know that we are operating with a minimum of weaponry. Yes, we are grateful, grateful very much for every support package that is provided to Ukraine from you, from your countries. But we need more weapons to drive Russian forces off our land, and especially in the Donetsk region. It's important that every support package that is announced and promptly put to work on the battlefield without any delay. The fighting in the Donetsk region depends on this. If Putin does not have any achievements there, he will not have any achievements anywhere or in anything. And I urge you to be more active in this work with us on air defense. And we have already started operating F-16s. Thank you for the support, Secretary, and to you, partners. And they strike down missiles and, and drones. They are very efficient, but they, they are few. You know about it. And we need much stronger fleet of F-16s. Russia has a shortage of microchips in its war against Ukraine, but the country has found a solution for this. Russian companies are using old Dutch ASML machines in the production of weapons to be used against Ukraine. According to Euromaidan media outlet, this revelation underscores challenges of enforcing sanctions in the complex supply chain. While ASML has ceased direct shipments to Russia, the country has found alternative means to keep its chips production operational. This workaround allows Russia to maintain a degree of technological self-sufficiency in its military operations, prolonging the war against Ukraine and makes Ukrainian citizens extra vulnerable to new attacks. In addition, it raises questions about the effectiveness of current export controls. As reported by Dutch newspaper Trau, intermediaries in China provide spare parts, allowing Russia to keep the machines running. As a result, Russia can produce some of its own chips for tanks, missiles and drones. These are weapons used daily to attack Ukrainian civilians and military personnel. As of 2023, Dutch company ASML, it is the largest supplier for the semiconductor industry and the sole supplier in the world of extreme ultraviolet lithography, photolithography machines that are required to manufacture the most advanced chips. The company has long since stopped sending spare parts. The company confirms that it complies with the imposed sanctions on Russia. They claim to have not shipped anything to Russia for years. One advantage for Ukraine is that the machines do not produce the most advanced chips. However, according to American University lecturer Chris Miller, author of Chip War, the fight for the world's most critical technology, this may not be a problem for Russia. According to the university lecturer, Russia can still easily make simple chips for tanks, airplanes, drones and missiles. Simple chips are often used in the military, but actually in all devices. A car contains thousands of chips, but only a few of them are the latest technology, Miller noted. In essence, Russia doesn't need the latest state-of-the-art chips to continue weapons production. The question is how Russia manages to keep its ASML equipment running for so long. Without new spare parts, a machine can break down after only a year, experts say. A number of small Russian importers could explain the circumvention. 
Customs records accessed by Trow show that since the start of the Russo-Ukrainian war, they have gotten spare parts for ASML machines into the country at least 170 more times, and that lasted at least until December 2023. These are middlemen who scour the market for usable parts, such as the highly specialized ASML equipment. They then resell the imported goods to manufacturers in Russia. Some of these traders, such as AK Microtech and Ostec EC, are already on Western sanctions lists because they have proved important to the arms and chip industry. Other importers from the customs data accessed by Trow are not yet on sanctions lists. These include Kraftec from St. Petersburg and VLK Logistica from Moscow. In addition, the Dutch outlet notes that other ways Russia manages to acquire these chips is through middlemen in China and Serbia. Increasingly, there is more evidence on Western chips featured in Russian weapons which are being used against Ukraine.